Well, here we are. Uh, it is Rick and Bubba University, the podcast time again, Bubba. And, uh, you know, to, to say, I, do you think, which one do you think? You know, we've always said that the big show is a show about anything, but I'll tell you, this whole podcast will cover some ground, too. Yeah, yeah. It's just an independent, standalone version of the show where we get to uh, do more of a deep dive on some topics we yep. want to talk about. Yep. And, Rick, today it's a topic we have talked about a lot on the show. It's evolved over the years, and that's tick bites and alpha gal syndrome. Alpha gal syndrome. Now I know, Bubba, you live in morbid fear of this. Well, I mean, it, Rick, you know, it, right. I, I try to stay safe out in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> it is interesting for you to be a person who loves the woods, loves the outdoors, but can be a little skittish when it comes to safety. Well, yeah, uh, snakes and uh, ticks not big on either one of those. You know where they live? Yes, in the woods. In the woods. Yeah. So uh, today, uh, we <laughs> our, our guest is actually Richard Chin. Richard is here. First of all, Richard, welcome to Rick and Bubba University. Thanks for having me. Uh, I bet you. I wish- call him Big Richard. Big Chin. Richard. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet he. I bet he wishes he was here for another topic, uh, not Alpha Gal, since you have it. But uh, but anyway, um, Richard is uh, from Alabama, Sweet Home Alabama, where our show originates from. Play a little ball. Yep. Play a little ball at the University of Alabama from seventy eight to eighty two. Was on two national championship teams. That kind of comes hand in hand with playing for Alabama. But uh, in seventy eight and seventy nine. Uh, and uh, had to, uh, we, of course, uh, got to meet him when he worked at Hoover, Hoover Tactical. Uh, he's uh, at Hayes International. He's been there. Uh, he's been a realtor, and he's helping his son and daughter-in-law right now with some restaurants, uh, Real and Rosemary, which uh, I'm familiar with. And, of course, like us, Bubba, avid outdoorsman. That's right. Likes that's, to hunt and fish. I think that's where I first really met did. Richard, uh, dealing with outdoors and firearms and all that kind of stuff. And, mm-hmm. uh, Richard, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, so wh- wh- where does this story begin? Well, l- let me tell you, Richard is, yeah. is, is I call him Big Richard. Yeah. He, he's big, he's full of life. He's full of life. And uh, he's a lot like Greg. He'll hold court, you know. Oh, yeah. And and uh, I used to, I'd see Richard at Hoover Tactical a lot, and we'd catch up on everything and, uh, you know, just uh, be enjoying conversations about hunting and the outdoors and firearms and um, I went in one day and I was looking for Richard and I didn't see him and I, I, I saw him over in the eating area and he was over in the corner eating a salad. I remember you telling me. And that. I was like, Richard, what, what's going on? And he, he looked all sad and everything. He said, man, he said, I've had to quit eating meat. And then immediately, oh, Rick, I pulled up oh, a chair. Richard, oh, and I Richard. said, Richard, what is oh, going Richard. on? Because I knew you've eaten a little meat in your time. Look, oh, to yeah. see a man of your stature eating yeah. a salad is sad. <laughs> and, and no wonder you were so downtrodden. So, so take us on this journey. Um, and, and you were one of the first ones. It didn't even have a name when you got this. And that's what oh, that's was so right. intriguing to me right. okay. because, of, again, my love of science. Uh, when you were telling me about this, I was intrigued because it was just so interesting because no one knew what was going on with you. Right. I had to tell the uh, dermatologist, uh, it wasn't a dermatologist, but the uh, allergy doctor what it was. When I she when she diagnosed me, I had to tell her what it was. There was a, a study came out of Johns Hopkins that I had found out about due to one of my uh, friends who passed away mm. and had a memorial service. And I was standing there looking at that they had food and they had some meatballs there and they smelled really good. And I was looking at them. The lady said, "Oh, help yourself, baby. You can have all you want." And I said, "I wish I could." So I can't eat red meat. And she said. Well, what, what happens when you have, as I said, I, I have a uh, breakout in hives and get to where I can't breathe. Oh. Uh, anaphylactic shock. But not bad because I would take, I started taking Benadryls. Uh, she said, hold on right here. I want you to talk to my daddy. Her daddy walks out and says, I hear you, you can't eat red meat, you can't eat meat. And I said, he said, I can't either. Hmm. And he was the where I found out about it. And... Uh, he told me that he got it turkey honey, mm. and guess where I got it? Turkey, turkey hunt. honey. Turkey mm-hmm. honey. So, so Richard, warm, how, did, warm to be out there. how did how did you first know you had a problem? Talk. Uh, about, well, carry us back to those first episodes. The the first the when I knew I had a problem, I uh, you know my son was playing for Coach Saban and his mother were wanting to go see the, the scrimmages. Of course, we were going to go. Yeah, of course. Well, I was turkey hunting like a, on a Thursday. Went down. We went, after the scrimmage, we went and ate uh, hamburgers out of a hamburger joint. He got one. Mine was kind of dry, wasn't very good. It was just, you know. And his was called the Gamble. It had chili on it, jalapenos, and cheese, mm. and it was just slathering. The Gamble. The, the Gamble. <laughs> the so gamble. Said, gamble. Come back next week. I'm getting that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I didn't have a reaction. That was day three. 
Day 10, I went down. We went back to the next scrimmage. I ate the gamble, came home about 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke up, and I was scratching my hands. Just mm. scratching. I was just like, mm. in my sleep. I was just doing like that. Mm. And I woke up, my palms were itching. And I got up and looked around, and I had welts oh my. on my legs. And I thought, you know, I didn't know what it was. I thought something had bit me. I had an right. allergic reaction to it, or it was something in the meat. Or in the on the that they put. Well, it was a gamble, Richard. It was a gamble. It was a gamble. It, it yeah. was a they gamble. told you it was yeah. a gamble. It was great. That's uh, the next. Uh, the now I had that reaction. Then the next reaction I had was April twenty seventh. So that just goes away. Did you take Benadryl? What, the, I the, just took some Benadryl and and set up and you know waited till I could you know I started getting a little in heavy breathing. So I set up till I went to sleep. And then about takes about two or three days for me to get over a reaction. I'm just mm-hmm. like okay. yeah. drained. Uh, the next time was April 27th. You remember the tornado came yeah. through oh, yeah. and, and hit uh, Cahaba Heights. Oh, yeah. I got up early. Uh, we had a skylight, and I looked up, and the, there was a pine tree in the basement. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that. And yeah. I said, get in the basement. We got yeah. in the basement. Power went off. was off all day. So I didn't get to see anything, and I was really stressed out. So I thought that was what it was. But I had some buffalo burgers that I had bought at a, and wanted to try them. Well, I, I grilled them for us to eat. I ate those, had a reaction. Thought it, and it, was a, it was a pretty good reaction. It was a lot more severe that time. And I said, it's got to be something that they're putting in the meat. Mm. I didn't want it to be the meat. No, well, none of us want that, Rich. I don't they, like it right now. Mm. I don't like him <laughs> hearing about it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny the way that I that I and, and I should have sprayed. I'm very I hate I hate getting ticks on me, and I normally just take I just spray just like my hair, yeah. my neck, around my sleeves, around my stomach, my legs, the inside. Of, you know, I spray. I don't want to get them on me, but I dr- was trying to kill my fifth mature bird of that season. I drove up, got out. Got me a cup of coffee, took one sip of it, right there. I said, yeah, right. gone. I could take you to the tree I sat down by. Uh-oh. Well, I didn't kill the bird. You didn't? No, he spotted me. I had a, a you know, the, a, your, your vest. A lot of times I have that blaze orange in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Well, I had one of those deals that I set up on my knee where I'm like, when I pulled that corner about that much was out. Mm. And uh, mm. he walked up there and do what I call one-eyed. When he does like that right there and sticks mm-hmm. one eye on you, you're good. busted. It's over. Mm. It's over. And he got with about 80 yards of me. Never did see him again. Mm-hmm. But I acquired that. All that happened because I didn't spray. So you were in a rush. You know the tree you sat down in front of. You got, you got one-eyed. And, then, and, then, and so he busted you. <laughs> So you didn't follow your normal routine? I did not follow my ru- normal routine of spraying before I got in the woods. Mm. Mm. And I, I don't know of anybody else in that club that's ever come down with that. I do know that there's one guy, his daughter got it later on. But she wasn't in, in the woods. She got it from working in the yard. So after the Buffalo Burgers, what did you do? Uh, well, I had the, I had the, uh, the stress of that day was pretty bad. Uh, well, yeah. But one of our friends called and said, there's a monster on the ground in Tuscaloosa, and I'd been trying to call my son all day. Uh, I called as soon as I got off the phone with her, and he answered the phone, and he was coming out of Coleman Coliseum, or, you know, the work where they work out. And, he, and I said, where are you at? And he said, I am just left working out, and he was standing with Coach Moore. Uh, I said, y'all need to take cover. Right now, there's a monster. I mean, that, that I have I can't sit because I don't have any power. Right. But uh, I called. You know, I told him get hide. He said I'm I'm looking at it. Wow. They were standing there looking at the at the at the tornado as it was coming over. Mm. It was at 15th Street. Yeah. And uh, you know that I, I really think that had a lot to do with that particular episode was the stress and the the Buffalo Burger. 
But did but you it, write it off as being more stressed than, I did. than burger? You still didn't realize you had a problem. I did not realize I had a problem with the with with red meat. I started getting uh, started being suspicious. Then it started going into uh, pork. But very very lightly, the the red the beef was severe pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. The pork was incremental. Uh, in 2012, when Nathaniel uh, graduated, went to get, uh, we took him out, and we're both pretty big guys. We ate three slabs of ribs between the two of us. I mean, that was that was we were eating. Mm-hmm. Y'all getting after it. And I got home, and these are and pork I ribs. I was going home, and, I, and my wife was driving. I was scratching my palm. I said, "I think I'm having a reaction to the pork." She says, "Well, take a couple of Benadryls." So I took mm-hmm. a couple of Benadryls. And I went home, went to bed, woke up, and was heavy, you know, not being able to breathe, was <gasps> heaving. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, uh-uh. I got up because she was still asleep, and I went in there and I took a couple more Benadryls because she says, you're a giant. Take take three or four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I take one you, you can at handle a time. It. You can handle it over your body, right? <laughs> I, I take one at a time. And then I, 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 it got worse and worse, and I started hurting. I mean, my chest was hurting. Richard. My head was hurting. I was getting worried, very worried. I went in there and I told. I woke her up. I said, "This is this is a pretty funny part of the story." But I woke her up. And she's like, you know, she goes like, "What?" <laughs> I said, "I'm gonna give you a choice. You can call nine one one or take me to the hospital. I'm dying." She says, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Goes in the bathroom, and I said, "I'll be waiting in my in the living room." So she comes. And it, it's it, it was funny because she didn't she didn't really she looked take, at me. Yeah. And I was sitting in there, and I was sitting in there, and I got up and I walked in. I looked, and you know how women are; they have to got to get made up, get made up time, a little yeah. bit before yeah. they leave. It's just a habit. And she was sitting in there like that, and I. I said, what part of I'm dying didn't you get? <laughs> are, you, are you really putting on your eye makeup? <laughs> right. And she goes, she she looks at me and goes, Oh, she shocked. Shocked. Right. Because I was swollen up. Oh, so it starts swelling you I, up. My, the- my ears, my lips, my I was swollen up. My whole body was, swell, was swelled up. So she gets me in the car. And those bed drills start kicking in, and she's going down South Shades Crest, and I'm going, like, I'm a little bit scared of dying from a car crash. Right, right now. Yeah, they're so, gonna be worse. Hey, there, we can go. She said, well, "Where do you want me to take you?" I said, "Well, St. Vincent's has always been good to me." So we went to the, the emergency in St. <laughs> it Vincent's. It might be the first one, Richard. Might be a good answer on that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the first the one we passed, one? Richard. How about the nearest? Not, <laughs> yeah. The nearest. How about the nearest? All right, hold I up. did use that. I did say there's a there's a, a <laughs> fire department right there. All right, hang on. We'll come back. We'll continue this conversation uh, with Richard Chen, uh, man. Uh, when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast continues. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick all right, so Richard Chin's our guest. We're, we're talking about, you know, we're, we're going to talk to you before we're done. Uh, Alpha Gal syndrome, you know, they're tying to the ticks. Richard was one of the first people uh, that, that started getting diagnosed with this. It was so new, nobody really knew what was going on with you. So you said you finally have had a huge reaction. You can't get your breath. The Benadryl at this time, they're not working. You're you're swelled up. Your wife realized she doesn't have time to get all her makeup on because <laughs> you said, what part of I'm dying did you not understand? <laughs> and you're trying to get to an emergency room. So what happened next? So she takes me to the emergency room because the Benadryls are I'm getting to where I can breathe a little bit. I walk in. You know, you walk in, and it was late at night. And there was a guy sitting over at those are there, and he had a towel wrapped around his hand. And this is what... And it was red. Mm. He had cut his hand or done something sure. serious with his hand. It was red. The lady looked down, looked up at me, and I don't know if you'd call it coded me. Oh, wow. She called immediately. And within 30 seconds, I was in the back, and they were, boom, on me. I was. I didn't even realize how swollen up I was. But she looked up, and it scared her. Wow, I was. Di- I mean, I could have died. I was at that point. Yeah, they're afraid yeah. you're going to get shut down. Yeah. Right, to breathe. Yeah. right. And they take me back there and they ask me. Said, "Have you taken anything?" I said, "Well, I've taken five Benadryls." And they said, "Well, you shouldn't have taken five Benadryls." Mm. 
Now we're going to have to wait till the Benadryl rise wears off before we no, can give you what? anything oh, else. Wow. So I had to sit there. And they probably and, had the superpower ready to and go. they had the superpower. They, they, that's right. Oh, they could have yeah. given me a shot, and I would have immediately. Like, I'm not sure what it was. It may have been adrenaline. Yeah. But uh, as we were leaving. Leaving? Told, le- at when, this was the next morning when okay, they let so, me go. So how long did it take for the bender to get to a point where they oh, – Hours? You hours. had to stay swollen up for hours? Uh, it, it was it – was, Working. It was g- working, but very slowly. So, But they couldn't they couldn't uh, interact the two. Yeah, had to be careful. Companies. They won't overdo right. it. Right. And then uh, uh, once, they, once they released me, uh, they said, you need to go to a doctor. And I and I did after the next after the you know the the uh, bacon well, hold on. BLT. Hold on. I had what, one more after that. What, what are you doing, Richard? Yeah. What did yeah, why did Richard? It, that what, might what, be the time to go. To the Richard, doctor. why did it take one more? <laughs> I, I, I mean, the, I know, I but the, he's the just tough as you, nails. Rich, you That's never, you nearly died. You you made a nurse do this. <laughs> you, you, you made a nurse look at a person with a hand cut off and say, "You need to wait." Yeah. I mean, I mean, Richard, you you had yeah. to go do it a bit. Tell you what, I, I tell you what, I'm gonna eat this BLT, and if it gets me, then I'll go. <laughs> Richard, I, I thought it was the amount that I could that I could. So you're self diagnosing now. That. I'm self diagnosing. After yeah. that, I did not. So uh, my wife, who was a strong force in me going to the doctor, said, "I'm done. You will go to the doctor tomorrow." And I got, I, I went, and they. Mm-hmm. That's where we actually found out what it was. Now they sent it, took, sent my blood out. They did a test, uh, you know, to see if you're allergic to stuff on your back. Mm-hmm. And they took my blood and they sent it to a lab in Texas. And my the uh, Lyme's disease came back negative. The alpha uh, gal uh, part came back positive. All right, so it's two different things. Yeah, so, so they're oh, yeah. two so, different. Yeah. So they're not related. They're not related. Both can you can get from a tick, but they're totally uh, different in the way they attack your system. Totally different. So then, what happened with the bacon? What was the bacon story? The the bacon story was mm-hmm. I wanted to try some uncured. Bacon that was natural didn't have it wasn't like you know the regular bacon and I made one ate one BLT, uh, it made me, and it, it, that's when I realized that this is getting worse. Richard, I don't know increments. why you want to get on this roller coaster again. Why? If I once once <laughs> I'm shaking hands with danger, look, once I'm puffed up and everybody's <laughs> yeah. in shock, I mean that, 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 that's it. Uh, well, you, who so loves bacon? Well, we all love yeah, it. Yeah. And you know what? Yeah. I take back what I just said. Bacon is worth one more shot. <laughs> one more shot. <laughs> I just take back what I said. Uh, so, so you had to know. And you, uh, deep down, you're like, please don't let bacon be involved. I, well, then you know, I, 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 the guy had talked to me and told me about it, but I really, I didn't really believe him. Why do we I, do that? I didn't because well, it, it hadn't got to that severity yet, and, well, it, and it, this we're not, plus we're, we're talking, talking about, about bacon. Yeah, you know, yeah, we're not talking about a lot of time either. Right. This was 2011, 2000, uh, spring of 2000 time, 2012. I was having severe, severe reactions to the point where I had to have carry epipens away around with me all the time mm. in case I had, you know, because you never, I never knew if it was a little bit or a lot. Right. And I found out that it, Benadryl, got to where it was a little bit. Benadryl works, but sometimes mm. you need that extra. Absolutely. Extra mm. So I guess that's the, at, at, at the point before you'd been fully diagnosed is when I came into the story and was talking to you and you said, man, they were, they were sending your blood off or was it after you were, you were um, actually diagnosed with alpha gal or AGS. Some of them are calling it now. Um, that that they were wanting your blood was it the the drug companies trying to find out what was what they could do to solve it or how how did that because I know you were donating a lot of blood there for a while. Well, yeah, that that was part of it. I think they never. I just I just donated it. So if I could help somebody else. Sure. They needed to find out what it was, <clears throat> and it was relatively you know like when you sent me the that article, I was shocked. Uh, it went from just a few thousand. To now I'm finding out that it's international. I read an article this morning in H- NIL, uh, a long article, very good, uh, that it, it, they're talking about Africa, different parts of the world where, where the same thing is showing up from tick bites. 
So are they are they tying it to a particular kind of tick? Well, yeah, the the one that that's <laughs> most notable right now, and Richard, you you jump in uh, if you have more information on it. But it's uh, it's the Long Star tick. It's a little it's a black tick with a white dot that's on right. it. That's mm-hmm. right. And they said it could be in some other ticks. They don't know, but they know that one for sure. But we had the story this week that you were referring to, Richard. They said uh, up to three percent of the population are ten million people could already have alpha-gal in their blood, which it's a protein that you get from the saliva of the tick that is very close molecularly. Watch out. Oh, that's a big word, isn't it? The I, molecular, look, when I saw you go for it, yeah. it was like Richard the, with the BLT. <laughs> the I mean, I'm, I'm try it. The molecular setup <laughs> is very similar to that in red meat. That's right. So your, body, so your yeah. body attacks that from the tick, and then when it sees it from the red meat again, it goes, hey, I got, I got a tick bite in here again i got to go after it so your your body is mistaking red blood uh or red meat for saliva of a tick and and that's where you get this uh, incredible reaction to it yeah and they and they talk about in the article what you went through they said sometimes in the beginning it takes so long for the reaction to take place people are not tying it back to their food right, right. because so many things have happened they said up to 12 hours sometimes right. so they they start thinking it's something else because you probably didn't think no way the beginning you thought, I'll tell you what, it's the meat. I didn't. Yeah. yeah. You know, Lyme disease is bad. I, I, I know several people who have that also, and uh, it, it's something that stays with you for life. They just treat the symptoms. And there, there's some, you know, new technology where they're trying to, to work on that, but it's, it's real cutting edge, nothing that's standard. Uh, and it causes a lot of health problems over a long time, but none of it is as violent and as deadly as what this is where you can actually not breathe, and that's, of course, something you don't want to get. So what, what did the doctors tell you? When, once they diagnosed you, They th- was some of it still some trial and error? Like, like I, I, from what I gather, it, it, it has to be a mammal, right? right. I mean, all it, mammals. Yeah, if it's chicken and it's fish, you're okay, I'm right? I'm good. Yeah, and turkey. Almost Seafood. Like, yeah, turkey almost like a get back. You need to get the turkey back after what happened. <laughs> and uh, but 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 it can be if it's a mammal. So that's where that pork hurts you, right? You know whether it's pork or beef. The other white meat. That's yeah, a lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, lamb can't do that. Can't yeah. do it. Love that. Love lamb. Mm-hmm. Love them. So Richard, I like was it. reading some of the treatment. Now they say that um, that if you don't have any red meat over time that sometimes your body's immunity to, to jumping on that will go down and people have been able to go back and have some level of eating red meat. Are you having any progress with that, or where are you I, at now? I, I, I've just gone to no red meat at all. It's just not worth the risk. I'm just not risk. taking a chance on I mean, it. you you just been bit too many times. Right. No pun intended. Now you don't want to well, deal with it, that. And there's something, there's something else to that, too. Uh, the more tick bites that you get, it, it makes it worse. Well, that's my, that was my next question. So this is not like I have, I'm immune now, so whether I get bit by ticks now doesn't really matter. It can get worse. It can get worse. Because you your body's going to react every time it sees that molecule. So right. the, the idea it's is not memory. to let it react. Right. And, and it, hopefully it has, it'll fade over time. Yeah. that protein. Right. And uh, uh, to finish that story about my wife, when we walked out, I said, you do realize that wherever blood goes, I was swelling up. My brain was swelling. My heart was swelling oh my goodness that's why i was hurting yeah Ooh. that'll do it and the, and the and the benadryl may have may have saved my life at one time that was by to get far it quick worst. yeah to get to where i could so that was worse than the blt that was that i was scared more afraid of dying uh then i didn't have enough time i got sick and it was over with the blt but i at the same time i couldn't breathe and the blt was leaving me Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, both it's, at the same go. time, and I couldn't catch my breath, and I'm uh, just about passed out from that one. But the the mm-hmm. other one, I was I was I I, I had never hurt like that. I was hurting my head well, because like, everything was swelling. It was. Yeah. yeah. So, so so like so what you're saying now though, you you've had enough of that. You don't desire to have any of those episodes anymore. No, I've got a friend that I, I've read about read a, a study today that that. And I, I don't, I don't pursue this a whole lot, but uh, his daughter got it, and now she's one of the people that has uh, built up, uh, starting to build up a tolerance to red meat again. Mm-hmm. So there is something going on there about about that. I just haven't, I just haven't tried it. 
All right, let's come back. it out. I kind of, I, I kind of <laughs> like to wait until, yeah, you know, yeah. there's yeah. some let's, let's data let out there. Breathe a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So how long, how long has it been, Richard? And I know we got a break. We got a hit right here. Been since I've eaten red meat. No, since you actually the first when you were first bit. Uh, two thousand uh, April, mid April of two thousand eleven. Oh, wow. All right, Richard. We'll come back more with Richard Chin when Rick and Bubba University the podcast continues. All right, so almost every day it seems now, Bubba, we, we hear another major corporation has gone woke. Hey, we're woke. Look at us. We're woke. And, of course, you and I have talked about this. A lot of this is just companies being held hostage and trying to get the mob to leave them alone. But they will give in. Uh, you, you see them, the, the, the employees there, they get all kinds of leftist propaganda. Uh, you know, And then you know we're spending money with them and we're funding you know, a lot of organizations that uh, don't seem to love the country much at all. And they certainly don't like the things a lot of us hold dear. And they seem a little bit upset with the Constitution. So, uh, and you think, well, Rick, we don't have choices. And sometimes that's right. But when it comes to uh, your, your sales service, you do have a choice. Because uh, you've got Patriot Mobile. Uh, Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative cell phone provider. Uh, they offer the same nationwide coverage as the major carriers. So you get the same great service plus the peace of mind that your money is supporting free speech, life, and liberty. Uh, their plans uh, fit any budget, and their 100% U.S.-based customer support team, we've talked about that on the show. Uh, have you tried to call customer service lately? Mm. Well, with Patriot Mobile, you're talking to their U.S.-based customer support team. Uh, this, the customer support, exceptional. Uh, Patriot Mobile shares your values, supports organizations fighting for religious freedom, constitutional rights, sanctity of life, and our veteran and first responder heroes. So just go to patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. Or you can call them, 972-PATRIOT. Get free activation with the offer code Rick Bubba. Put the two names together, Rick Bubba. Veterans and first responders save even more. So make the switch today by simply going to patriotmobile.com slash Rick Bubba. So Richard Shin is our guest on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. He so wishes we were discussing another topic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But he was one of the early uh, diagnoses of the alpha-gal disease that comes from tick bites and it, it has rendered him unable to consume red meat of any kind without some kind of severe and, and life-threatening reaction and this has been going on since 2011 yeah and I, richard i've told a lot of people about your story because you know we run a lot of circles with outdoors right. folks that, that you know are always having to deal with ticks and things like that and uh, i even i was going to share with you i got an email from a lady who said that that when we had brought this up on the air originally talking about it she she credits us with saving her husband's life because he had had a reaction. They had no idea. The doctors were completely stumped, and she had suggested they be tested for this, and it came back positive. And so through us and through your original story, probably saved a guy's life, at least one we know of. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. <laughs> I, you, I used to you, they're, they're, they, friends would call me up on the phone and say, Hey, they're talking about you on Rick and Bubba. <laughs> oh, yeah. I if say, we talk cool. alpha gal, cool. Richard yeah. Chin's coming up. Right. So how do you approach it as far as, like, one of the things you go back and look at, because we are trying to help with yeah. this podcast, right. too, is uh, what are some things you would suggest now that you've been there looking back going, well, if I'd have known what I was dealing with, I would have done this, this, and this. Obviously, it starts with the obvious. Don't go into the woods if you're not protected from ticks. Right, right. Make sure you spray. I use deep woods off. Because I'm allergic to the permethian. Yeah. The permethian's good. You can spray your clothes. It'll kill the ticks for several washings. It doesn't go away. But I, I sprayed on mine. I had, a, I had a reaction to it. So I don't use it anymore. But I use the, the deep woods off. And the the last time, and it's been a long time since I got ticks on me. I was doing some yard work the other day, of all places, removing some leaves around my, my yard. And raked them up, and it had a uh, before the burn ban. Took I was burning them, <laughs> burning the leaves. And that night, I I found that I had four or five ticks on around my waist. Whoa, mm. four or five, four or five little nymphs. The little nymphs. Oh yeah, little small. Oh yeah. Uh, some people like call them seed ticks. Seed ticks. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they're they 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 live their lives in stages, but it's actually a nymph. Okay. And it'll shed its skin, and it'll grow into the next stage. But they require blood to do each one oh, so to get to where they're they're having. Mm. Uh, well, that's the first time, and I hadn't sprayed, and I was working in my yard. 
you can get you can get this working in your yard. If you're going to do anything, you can walk under an oak tree and or a tree, and they'll they'll they sense a the vibration, they'll fall off the tree on you. And so many of us have pets too, right. and even though they have, you know, all kind of protection for flea and tick now for pets. It doesn't mean a, a tick won't jump on there and be riding gun come right because we we found them on the couch in the That's, house before. Yep. You know? Come on now, yeah. yep. So it's uh, it, it's scary in that respect, but I think if you if you do the steps you need to and you're aware of it. I think that's a, a a big deal too, and and from what they're saying, and I know you like to experiment, uh, <laughs> but they, I, I think their recommendation is once that you they think you have this is to completely stay away from red meat, and like what we've seen with some people, let the immunity die down in, in your system, and then at some point they they may be able to pick it back up and and regain uh, the ability to eat some red meat along the way. Right. How how long? I mean, you can say never because it, it may not have happened yet. Do you still miss red meat as, oh, as yeah. much as you? Have you Absolutely. You, you haven't gotten to the point. Would you? Do you miss a good old steak? You miss pork, or do you miss a hamburger? Uh, you know, the hamburgers we got you. The hamburger was a bad deal because you probably put away a little steak when you were playing football, didn't you? I did. <laughs> yeah, I I would eat steak one two times a week. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd go get uh, a whole a whole ribeye a prime rib. Yeah, uh, a ribeyes. I had a steak uh, last night. I love them. Sorry. Now, if they, now it makes it pretty tough on the guys at the camp. Now, they, they 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 take it easy on me. They they eat a lot of chicken. They don't get around. They, they don't they while, don't wave I, it in I front just, of you. They say, "Man, we're just gonna have to have a steak tonight." And I yeah. said, "Well, don't don't feel guilty about it." But we do. Richard. I like smelling it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can, can, can you have to be careful of like even things like I know at, at the camp house. You know, I mean, we're we're relatively clean, but right. you know, we'll use the same pan for for several things. That if you if so, if meat's even been cooked in the pan, can would that get you? Yeah, it, how, it, how cautious couple, do you have to be? Yeah, I've had a couple times where I've had a cross uh, contamination. Mm. Uh, one time, I ate wings that were cooked on a, a rotisserie with pork, and the pork mm. the pork fat from the pork it. was dripping on it. I had that, and then wow. the one was I ate uh, the casing off of it was a. That turkey. a turkey dog that had a pork casing. So you got to be careful about the casings that you eat. And I didn't know this. A lot of the uh, vaccines that they that they're giving people, like the monoclonal uh, antibodies, have gelatin in them. Really? Yes. And it's a bo- bovine mm. product. Mm. So, yeah. and I'm glad I didn't have to take anything for for COVID. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my my daughter has a peanut allergy that's uh, somewhat severe. She has to carry EpiPen too, but it, it's it's always interesting to me because you have to. There's a lot of things you just don't know. You know, you go to a restaurant, you have to ask. A lot of times, the staff they're not sure. You know, and you always no, have to kind of sure. screen for that. But then you turn around and and like a Chick Fil A is grilled in peanut oil, it doesn't affect them at all. You know, so it's just it's so strange what does and doesn't apply to those right. things. But you just have to be careful. You have to be very, uh, you know, deliberate in, in your food choices and and keep that EpiPen. You know, if you have to, you got to pop it. I call it a spear. Yeah, really. You have you had to use it yet? Have you? No. Ever? Yeah, I haven't <laughs> that either. Was, and I, that was I, a prime motivator. I mean, not. <laughs> yeah, just knowing you got. To so do I'm that. not going to stab myself with that. <laughs> yeah, well, you will if you get in the body. <laughs> if I had okay, to, breathe, I would. But, yeah, right. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. What are you doing? The leg? Is that <laughs> in what leg, right. the thigh? Yeah, right in the old thigh. And then they give you a practice. Uh, they give you one to practice with. It doesn't have the big. You're talking about a big needle too, man. I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, so I just really have done like, like, like Bubba said. I when I go out to eat, I tell them, I said I'm allergic to this, and when I say allergic, that's that's when they need to pay attention, and they and they, everybody's good about it because you know, right? That can be a problem for them. They don't want you knocking tables over, laying in the floor, right? Yeah, that kind of that kind of kills the appetite oh, yeah. for everybody else. That's for sure. <laughs> How sad is it? He was trying to eat a turkey. Dog, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's sad. That's pretty. And, and, but and then it got you anyway. It that, got that, me. That's it, what, it wasn't. That, it wasn't bad. I, right. I, you know. I, I. You know. And I. And I, once again, I was at the camp, and I. They were fixing me. And he said, "I got you some turkey dogs." And everybody at your hunting club. They actually, tried to take care of you. Look, Man, look they tried to take care of you. They cook everything. What at Wishbones was what my hunting, uh, not mine. It's Joe. Uh, Joe Robbins' place, but I helped manage it. Uh, they they cook all my stuff separately. 
just you know, to be I, safe. You remember, Jim, you remember Jim Bob Harris? Oh, yeah. yeah Jim, course, Bob, yeah. Jim, Bob, Jim Bob brought me some uh, salmon and cooked it separately on an aluminum foil. And some of the best salmon I've ever had. And it was smoked. And he oh, put yeah. Lemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we we had lemonade to marinate it with. So. <laughs> that works. And it was it was probably some of the best salmon I've ever eaten. But they they they're very very careful. They're watching out. You know, I, I've not had a, a reaction in a long long time. But it's just because I've taken that just done away with the red meat. Now there's some silver on line. It's my cholesterol was under two hundred. I bet it <laughs> is. My brothers my brothers both have uh, high cholesterol. And my oldest brother, he has to take, uh, you know, medicine for his. Yeah. I mean, it's in the. It's way up there. Yeah. And that's hereditary. Yeah, I'm in touch with that emotion. Yeah, we get, well, we, we're I, aware of that. Boat. Yep. Yeah. I, everything I've ever tried to lower my cholesterol, other than medication, had no impact whatsoever. And uh, so they're like, you, you've got hereditary genetic problems with cholesterol. You know, you, you could you could do everything and do everything right, and you're still gonna have high right. Cholesterol. So, and, um, so, Richard, do you we, do you get tested ever so often, or what? What I is have, your relationship with a doctor now? There's no point? there's no need in testing me anymore because I've just you know I know what it is. Uh, my my Lyme disease was, has been tested. It, it's it's negative, so I'm good there. The other is uh, I you know they don't know for sure whether it's just certain people get over it. Oh really? Right. Right. It's not everybody. Some people go the exact opposite. It's just like everything. And some people go out the exact opposite direction. I don't. I don't know that I want to find out. No. Now, once I, you know, you know, I was pushing the envelope quite a bit. Yeah, it you was were. Because, it was because uh, I love steak. I know I you didn't want to get. Look, we get it. You, I, if you there's know, two guys that get it, it. Mm-hmm. yeah, we understand. I, I just thought in this study it came out that that three percent or ten million people have. That was a lot of. That's people. a lot. That's, that's, a lot a, that's, that's shocking. All right, we'll come back. We'll finish up with Richard Chin on this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, I'm just going to tell you right now that I'm loving the products from Manscaped. And, uh, you know, when it, it really I was thinking about it because I'm getting low on the, on the shampoo and the, and the conditioner. I want to ask you something. Is there a man on the planet? That actually has separate shampoo and then a separate conditioner. Anybody, Rick? I, usually, I, mean, I, I will say I usually go convenience. Yeah, I will grab whatever I can find in the shower. It don't have to be mine. It no, can be her, just too. anything, okay. just something. Look, I to was, feel like I've soaked up good. Look, you know? I was raised by a man that washed his hair with zest. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, but anyway, <laughs> but let, let me tell you something. The, the these products are designed for men, and and they're fantastic. And I, I've got the the shampoo and the conditioner, and, and of course that's all together. They've got a great box body wash there and but i'm gonna tell you about some of their hygiene products too you know with a beard you know a beard when i first grew a beard I, and i and i've really still learned i really had a very hard time keeping it neat as, as you you painfully have seen working with me bubba but i'm gonna tell you what they've got a trimmer that is just fantastic it's the best one i've ever used and uh, and it, it's fantastic and if you you know if you need to do some grooming it, it's the way to go it keeps your beard neat and then you know from head to toe if you need some work you know it'll help you with that too but you get 20 percent off right now we're putting together the ultra smooth package uh you know it's it, it's uh, you, you've got the lawnmower that I just talked about. It keeps everything, you know, smooth. And then, of course, you also have the weed whacker, you know, to get the hair out of your ears or your nose as we get a little <laughs> older. And but anyway, if you want to look at what they've what they've got, you get twenty percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com if you use our code Bubba twenty. Okay, Bubba twenty. Uh, you know, it's you know how you're talking about when you're trying to shave. A lot of times you're trying not to cut yourself. Look, these are designed for a smooth shave. Uh, all of the hygiene, hi, the the hygiene that we need as men, their products do a great job, and I love them. So go to manscaped.com, twenty percent off plus free shipping with the code Bubba twenty. That's manscaped.com uh, and the and the code Bubba twenty for twenty percent off and free shipping. All right, Richard Shins here with us. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. I'll tell you one thing, he's doing. You're going to be selling a lot of uh, of, of deep. Uh, what is it? Deep woods. Deep, deep woods, woods off. Yeah, deep wood. Promethean. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 say it again. Promethean. Yeah, I can't say that. P E R. Yeah, that's the one Dan and used to talk about. All I know. Time. I mean, we just we just <laughs> said we can't say that. It's in a yellow can. He's in, he's in we, love. We, we couldn't say it, so we just went with deep woods off because deep's a lot easier to say. <laughs> so so you, if, if you're if you're watching this or listening to it. 
Be sure you're protected against ticks. Right. Do, do we believe the ticks are getting meaner or something? Or I mean, because no, this, this is something that's relatively new, right? Well, they, I think this get- disease is. But I mean, there's a lot of things you can do common sense. And Richard, they make fun of me sometimes. I, I put my pants legs in my boot, not on the top, because a tick will get on your boot and it'll go right up the boot to your leg. Right. And you, you're also they recommend you wear white clothing, white shirt long sleeves if possible because you can see the tick and get it off of you. And, Rick, if you get it on you, the CDC says, and we've heard all kind of wives' tales over the years about getting a tick off, and I've seen everything on the oh, sun yes, done to yes. get one off. They said the thing to do is get it off as quick as possible. Don't wait. Get it off. Try to use tweezers. Get as close to the skin surface as possible. Pull up with a steady, even pressure. Don't twist or jerk. Because that can pull the head of the tick off. I know. Off. What about if the head breaks and, off in there? And if, if the head does break off, you may get an infected spot, but it doesn't mean you're going to get these diseases. So from really that, that yeah. Okay. So the key is really to get it off quick as possible. And even if you leave the head in, that's better than not that's, getting the tick off. That's a off. mild yes, discomfort. That's correct. It's not, you, you, you still stop the tick from giving you the right. disease. And, and, you know, just like you would with a cut, you want to clean it and uh, get antibiotic type alcohol or whatever you can on it as soon as possible. So I think just, uh, you know, being aware of that. Uh, and we've all had ticks on us before. I don't know anybody, even if you're, like, say, in the yard or you have pets, oh, you're going to yeah. get them. But just be aware of what they are and uh, be able to react to it quick. And if, you, uh, if you've if you been bitten by a long star tick, uh, which is the, the black tick with a white dot on it, and maybe Adler can show some video yeah. of that, um, know what's possible and monitor that situation. And like I say, now they have a blood test for alpha gal. So you don't have to wait till you've had a, a severe reaction and have to go to the hospital. Uh, if you, if you've been bit by this tick that is known to carry this disease. So Richard, did they, it, there's nothing you can do other than stay away from what makes you sick, right? That's right. There's no treatment or anything like that for it. Not and, that I'm aware of. And they, they, I was reading about something today and I'm like, well, yeah, we'll let them test that out on somebody. Yeah, you're you're gonna let them put a little more in, in the field. Yeah, you, you don't had enough of that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that that that. Yeah, we, we let others try things uh, because those attacks would be enough for me to go. I, look, I can live off chicken, seafood, yeah, turkey. Yeah. There's you know, still a lot of meat right. out there. Yeah, do you, do you eat more fish, chicken, or turkey? Uh, uh more chicken. More chicken. I do eat a lot. I eat fish about two times a week. Yeah. Uh, if I I, I, I substitute. Uh, the ground turkey for you know burger, and we've just learned to dress it up. We, yeah, and that's the key. You got to dress it up though, because it, it can't stand on its own. Right. I mean, you you gonna have, have the flavor. There. No, you got to get good fat. Yeah, get, 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 yeah, 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 get some of that purple onion on there. <laughs> right. You know, get yeah. That's that's good. Well, Richard, we appreciate you sharing this, and like you. I say, we know it's helped some people, and uh, hopefully that you know awareness to to this going forward will help some more. Yeah, 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 Richard Chin. You know, people saying, you know, Alpha Gal, we started, and, and where did it start with Richard Chin? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, was, one, one, he was the first one I ever heard of. Right, one, one, one of the first ones ever. AGS. And, yeah, and, and, and you had some denial in the beginning. I yeah. mean, you, that you're going to have that because you, you didn't want to let it go. That's true. You well, Richard's a big guy. He's tough. I mean, I he's played a little ball. I mean, you don't want you don't want to think something's got you down. Well, what Rick, if I walked know? in today, Bob, and told you you're done with red meat? Yeah, well, that'd be that'd be a tough call. It would. But, hey, it's better than the alternative. Of all the red meats, which one would you miss the most? Would it, oh, you gosh. said steaks, right? You said uh, – oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But sure. be careful yeah. because he, he just said pork's involved. So be careful. Well, I mean, we're, we're talking about goodbye bacon, goodbye sausage. I think – Ribs. I Ribs. think, I, think oh. I could do without those if I had to. Um, it's like we've talked about before, Rick, totally different topic, but I, I like – I do eat French fries, but I could live without French fries in my world. Can you live to. without bacon, sausage? It, that would be tough because it's barbecue, in so many things. Barbecue. You know, it's it's in a lot. You got to be careful. Barbecue, of that. but Rick, old steak, that'd be hard to beat. Steak, steak, that'd be yeah, tough. That's a tough one, man. And Richard, I hope you get back so you can have it one day. I hope we get a breakthrough on this and I can get you something and neutralize that. Do you desire to ever have meat again? Oh, absolutely. Do you? Okay. You, when you, they're cooking steaks, I'm smelling them. I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> is that is that tough? One? Is it tough? Re- it, it, it does is. that give you it, it some really pleasure, is. or does it make it harder? Uh, well, it, it makes it, it 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 gives me some pleasure, but, but I'm just remembering what it was, mm-hmm. what it was like. 
Because I know some people, and I'd be like Pavlov's dog. I know some I'd people be that, drooling yeah, everywhere. Yeah, they could, <laughs> I do that. Yeah, now. yeah. yeah they, they, they want to smell foods that they don't eat. They yeah. said that's better not having it at all. Right. I think yeah. I'd be the opposite. I don't yeah. think I'd want to smell it. Now, I certainly wouldn't want to smell bacon. No way. We well, remember Ryan Greenwood went on that sniffers yes. diet one time right. with us. Yeah. The turkey yeah. bacon yeah. is not the same. No, it's not. It's like a and piece turkey of ham. sausage. Yeah, all that. Yeah, everybody. Oh, you can't even tell the difference. Yes, you can. Mm, yeah, you, can. you absolutely can. Mm. So, Richard, thanks for being with us. And remember that. Hey, protect yourself. If you're going to be in there, and I think one thing you need to hear. You may say, "Well, I don't hunt and fish. I don't go. I don't hike." Yeah, but you can be working in your yard and still get it. You would have pets and get it. Pets, you know, yeah, for some of you, you pet people. That, be careful. They lay up there all shacked up with pets. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, remember that, Richard. Thanks for being with us. I thanks, Richard. It. Thanks for having. Always me. a pleasure. Yeah, it is. And thanks to all of you for joining us on this edition of Rick and Bubba. University, the podcast.